Hi, my name is Spencer Heath, and this is my SI application video. Today, I'm going to be going over pharmaceutical calculations, specifically compounding and reconstitution. Uh, quickly, I have listed three keys to success that I thought of uh, when thinking about taking pharmaceutical calculations. Uh, first is definitely don't lose points on the easy stuff, uh, such as units and trailing zeros. Often, you can do a, a problem completely right, step by step, and at the end, you forget to put your units or you have trailing zeros, it's going to be marked completely wrong and you're going to lose all those points. Uh, probably most important is knowing your conversions and abbreviations. Without those, you're often not even going to be able to start a problem or even if you get through the problem and you need to convert to something at the end, you're not going to be able to do that and you're going to miss the whole thing. And lastly, before you start, you kind of want to understand where the ultimate question of where the problem is going so you don't kind of get lost up in the wording of the problem or excess information. So here we have a reconstitution example. A patient comes to you with a prescription of penicillin V potassium or solution for 90 milligrams per five milliliters and instructions are five milliliters every eight hours for 10 days. Uh, the penicillin V potassium oral solution available in your pharmacy is at a concentration of 125 milligrams per five mLs. How much water in fluid ounces needs to be added to make the prescription? So first, this is kind of a typical label example you'll see on the penicillin bottles. It'll have your dispensing instructions, it'll have your concentration, and it'll have the total volume of the bottle. So here, for, the 100, for this prescription of penicillin you have available, you have a concentration of 125 milligrams per 5 milliliters. Uh, the dispensing instructions call for 127 milliliters of water to be added to give you a total volume of 200 milliliters in the bottle. And so now we're going to walk through step by step on how much water we need to be add in fluid ounces to get our strength of 90 milligrams per 5 milliliters. So first we're going to want to know how much penicillin dry powder is in the bottle. And we can do this by using the concentration and the volume given on the label. So first we know our concentration is 125 milligrams per 5 milliliters. Now all we have to do there is multiply by our total volume of 200 milliliters. And so that is going to give us a total concentration total amount of dry powder in the bottle of 5,000 milligrams. Step two, we're going to want to calculate the volume of this dry powder. Now, we only added 127 milliliters of water to this bottle, yet we got a, a total volume of 200 milliliters. That means that dry powder has some volume. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our total volume of that bottle, which is 200 milliliters, and we're going to subtract the amount of water we added. And that's going to give us 73 milliliters. And that 73 milliliters is going to be the volume of that dry powder. Now step three, we're going to solve for the volume of water we need. So first, the first step is going to be uh, calculating the total volume. So we just found out in step one that we have 5,000 milligrams of drug. Now we don't know this total volume of this new prescription strength we want, but we do know the strength we need. So we know it needs to be 90 milligrams per 5 milliliters. So we're going to set up 5,000 over X is going to be equal to 90 milligrams over 5 mLs. And the easiest way to solve this problem is going to be cross multiply. So you're going to get 90 times X is going to be equal to 25,000. And if you divide that out, you're going to get an uh, answer of 277.77 milliliters. And that is going to be the total volume once reconstituted, not the amount of water added. And it's important to note not to round off your answers until you're done. I could have wrote 278, but you want to keep your decimal place is going out until you get to your final answer. So now calculating the amount of water added. So we have this total volume of 277.77 milliliters. Now we just calculated that amount of dry powder. So if we subtract the volume of the dry powder, that is going to give us the water we need to add. Of two, and that comes out to 204.77 milliliters. And we're not done yet. If it asks for how much water needs to be added in milliliters, we could stop there and round to 205 and we would be done but it asks for fluid ounces, so we're gonna to have to do a conversion. So we have 244.77 milliliters, and if you, you just gotta to have to know your conversions, they have to be memorized, uh, kind of like the back of your hand. So you have 204.77 milliliters times, and in one fluid ounce, we know that there's 29.57 milliliters. And so if we do our conversion, we're gonna get 6.92 fluid ounces, but the problem asks to uh, round to the nearest whole number, so it's going to come out to seven fluid ounces.